See, a lot has not gone right this season. We're 28 and 31 with 23 games to go. We're at the All Star break. And I thought this would be a very good time to rank every Raptor from this season currently on the roster based on the expectations I had for them going into this season and what we actually got from them. And I have a fun tier list where we're going to put that all together. So, I want to preface this by saying, this is how they performed based on my expectations compared to my perception on their reality this season. So, some bad players might be in the above expectations because they exceeded what I thought of them. I thought so little of them, yet that they're surprising me a little bit. And vice versa, where players playing well, but I expect them to be even better. So keep that in mind as we go through the 17 players on this list. So as you see, five different tiers. There is the well beyond expectations, the above expectations, the middle, they met expectations, below expectations, and far below expectations. And actually, we should add in uh, one at the bottom here, not enough games. So no particular order here. This was just random order that they were placed in. So for starters, we're going to Jakob Pertl, pretty simple, not enough games. Um, Otto Porter, I'd like to like, you know, berate him because he got injured, but it's not his fault. The reality is what he play eight bloody games. Not enough from Otto Porter Jr. for me to say that he has not met expectations because, like, we just haven't seen him. In the games we saw him, he was fine. It's just we have not really seen him. Pascal Siakam, there was always these questions. Could Pascal Siakam be that 25-point-per-game player? Um, I had my doubts. I thought he was, like, an all-star caliber player, like 23 points per game, but his rebounding hit a new level. His assists hit a new level. His scoring hit a new level. And I and I just did not see all of that culminating together this season. I, I think you have to say he went well beyond expectations. Sure, like I think the defensive stuff hasn't been quite what I've wanted it to be, but I'm trying to I'm struggling to, to put this into words. Like he's just been so, so good this season, especially start of the season. Like he was tearing it up. The the notion that he has no bag, the jokes that all he does is spin. You can watch one game. He now has so many different ways to get to his spot and so many different ways to hurt you. And for large parts of the season, like he's just been doing everything. I, you have to put him well beyond expectations for that. For Gary Trent Jr., yeah, you know, he's a high-risk, high-reward defender. He's a streaky shooter. He had a struggling start to the season. He's been good since then. But ultimately, you know, he's your... Middle of the pack score. He'll give you like 15, 16, 17 points per game. He'll do so pretty efficiently. He, he's, he's been what I thought. He's been pretty much what I thought he would be this season. And sure, it's better than last season, but I expected improvements compared to last season. It's not a last season versus this season sort of thing. Remember, this is not a comparison to last season. I expected Trent to improve a little bit, and he has done that. He's met expectations. Fred Van Vliet, this is, this is a difficult one because start of the season... You could probably put him here. You could definitely put him here. But two months running now, he has been excellent. He's been excellent. And he's been pretty much back to his all-star levels. Contrary to the loud, I would say the loud minority, we'll call it, or the loud, I guess the people, the loudest people are the ones that hate on Fred Van Fleet. In actuality, he's been fine as a playmaker this season. In fact, he's been better than expected for me from a playmaking standpoint. Uh, the shooting took a dip initially. It has gotten a lot better as the season went on. I, I, I kind of, I, I don't want to be unfair because he's been so good lately. But, but it's hard to forget where things were, like where a lot of his performances weren't good start of the season. His defense hasn't been what I thought it was. I think it's fair to say he's been below expectations, but he has improved drastically. And the last two months, he's been great. It's just, I'm not going to forget the start of the season. Uh, Joe Wieskamp is, a t is, I could definitely put him in not enough games, but I think for a player signed on two 10-day contracts, I have my expectations for what a 10-day contract player is. The fact that he got a multi-year contract guaranteed for the rest of this season and non-guaranteed for next season, I expect him just to be a 10-day guy who left. I, I can already say at this point he's he's above expectations. 
We haven't seen a lot of him, but based on what I projected for him, he's been above that. Thaddeus Young, to be honest, a bit below. I thought he'd have more of a role. His defense doesn't really keep him on the court. In fact, it takes him off the court a lot of the time. You know, signing him for $8 million, I expect him to be, you know, a, a, a player that gets minutes every game, but he's not really getting that this season. Is that his age? Is that coaching? Whatever it is. Uh, I expected just a little bit more from Thad. That's not, not trying to be too disrespectful. I expected a little bit more. For OG, there were certain leaps I, were, I was expecting. His defense has, has really propelled itself to a different level this year. I think I can say met expectations. Nothing has been crazy that like, wow, this I can't believe he's doing this. But nothing has been so bad that I'm like, wow, like he really can't do this type of thing. Like, you know, I knew the shot creation stuff likely wasn't going to come this season, but he's still a good three-point shooter. He's an excellent defender. We already knew all these things about him. We're not getting introduced to anything new about him this season. Delano Banton's next. He hasn't been great. I wasn't expecting him to be. He's about met expectations as well. He, he struggles with that entry pass. He struggles to make a difference on the court and not just make up the numbers. But, you know, that's pretty much what I was expecting from him. At the end of the day, this is a 46 overall pick. We probably got enough, a pretty good value out of that. But I, I struggled to see developmental leaps to get this team, get him to the next level long term. And uh, nothing this season suggests that uh, he's been anything above or below what I thought he would be. Scotty Barnes, now this one hurts me. This one, this one's going to hurt me. I got to say he's below expectations. He's been pretty same, pretty similar to what he was last season. And I understand giving him time. I, I, I'm giving him time. But from my expectations, like I, like I think I myself and a lot of people had very, very high expectations for Scotty Barnes this season. Like, I don't think it'd be crazy to say he could go here, but... He's been fine. We're giving him time. He's only 21 years old. I, I, that's all fine and well. I, I'm fully supportive of that. I think he's going to be an excellent, excellent player for the better part of a decade for this team. But we are expecting a jump this season. It didn't happen. It's sophomore slump. It's not a foreign concept to, to seeing. There's no like, panicking from me. But we were expecting a bigger self-creation leap, a bigger playmaking leap, a bigger defensive leap. And we just haven't gotten that to a consistent degree. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to, you know, say he's not going to pan out. I'm just saying high, high hopes for him this season to like maybe even challenge for an all-star spot. That's probably a bit too far, but yeah, he hasn't met the expectations. I think that's fair to say. And hopefully you understand that. Chris Boucher, like... I, this is tough. How much did I really... How, how much did I really think of Chris Boucher? He's pretty much like, there's some nights he's here. There's some nights where I'm like, yeah, you know, he's the energy guy. If he hits his threes, he's a completely different player. But he's largely been that loose cannon type of player where he's super hot, super cold. Sometimes he's locked in on defense. Sometimes he's not. And that's just not really surprising to me. He's a met expectations sort of player. Jeff Doughton, ooh, Jeff Doughton. It's not really fair to say. I could say he's met expectations, but I, I, I don't think there's been enough in the NBA for me to really give a, a fair assessment for him. I'll put him there. Malachi Flynn, this is tough because like I'm low on I'm low on Flynn. I can't really say he's below because I, I'm just I'm just very low on the player in general. I didn't expect him to rise up and become the backup point guard. I didn't expect him to develop a consistent three-point game. I didn't expect him to develop a playmaking game that keeps him on the floor. And I didn't expect him to develop defense that would stop him from having such sporadic minutes. He's been as I thought he'd be. Call me a hater. Call me disrespectful. I'm low on him, and he hasn't done anything to suggest I was wrong for thinking that. Uh, Ron Harper Jr., same thing. Ooh, Juancho Hernan Gomez. Um, at the very least... I thought this guy would just shoot the ball well. We signed him to be a shooter. A lot of a lot of what we were we were trying to make up from our shooting deficiencies for this season lends heavily on Wancho. And that signing, I said he would not make the rotation. I said he would not crack the rotation. So in that case, he has exceeded expectations because he's a daily rotation player. But when I see him play, 
He made the rotation, but I'm also like, this is also worse than I was expecting still, yet I think the Raptors' depth is at such a bad spot that, like, he is still underwhelming to his abilities. But then there was a start of the season where he was making a difference. He wasn't shooting well, but, like, there were other things he did. But these days, he's just doing nothing. I can't say he was far below expectations for that reason because I, I was low on him. But I can't say he's met expectations because, at the very least... I want to shoot above 30%, which I don't even think he's doing right now. Christian Coloco, I got to say, he's definitely in one of these two. He was a 33rd overall pick. I thought he might struggle to play in the NBA at all this season, get a lot of time in the G League, which he's doing now and playing well in the G League. How much better than expectations? I would say for a guy that I thought would struggle to make any sort of NBA impact this season, he has done it. And you know what? He's had some decent minutes. He's had some bad minutes, and there's a lot of things he needs to improve on still. But I thought this was a guy that may not even touch an NBA court in his rookie year. And he's had some some bad games, but he's had some good games as well and some good a lot of good moments that I wasn't expecting from him. I'll put him in well beyond. I could say that he could also be here, but he's definitely he's definitely exceeded my thoughts for him. Finally, we go to Precious Achua. Was very high on Achua going into the season. Struggled out of the gate recently. He's been as I expected. He's hitting the three ball pretty well. He's providing that defensive stoppage that we've wanted. I, I'd say if, if I move him anywhere, I'd move him down because I, I'm, I'm very, very high on Achua. But I think a safe spot for him to be is in the Met expectation category. And uh, I guess as you see from this list... I wouldn't say, like, you know, how are the Raptors doing so poorly when so many guys meet expectations? But I'm looking at, it like, there's guys here, like like Flynn and, and, and Banton, where I wasn't expecting much, and they're not doing much. So, and and I guess Coloco and Wieskamp are exceeding expectations, but they aren't really still providing consistent NBA-level play. Uh, and Wieskamp, I mean, Jerry's still out to a certain degree on him. So, that's the list. Remember, this is based on my expectation, which I tried to convey in the best way possible compared to the reality that I perceive of the player. Try not to hate too much, and uh, let me know what you'd change about the list. Let me know what you would uh, keep about the list. In the comments, though, drop a like if you enjoyed, and uh, make sure you're subscribed.